For the last month or so, I've been on the field testing team for the Piopoli Magneto X. This is truly something different in 3D printing, so let's check it out in detail and see how it's improved ahead of launch. I review a lot of 3D printers, but this is the first time I've officially been part of a pre-release test group. And I found the process quite interesting. So today I'll take you behind the scenes and let you get to know this printer a little better. Like many of you, I first heard about the Magneto X in the 3D Printing Nerd video where Joel interviewed Mark, co-founder of Piopoli, as he demonstrated an early prototype of the Magneto X. Since then, videos have been released on Piopoli's official YouTube channel, but these are only teasers. To find out more details, the best thing you can do is come to the pre-order page on the Piopoli website. As we can see, the price is $2,000 US, which makes it one of the more expensive 3D printers available, but it is quite unique, so watch this whole video before you decide. Previously, there was a pre-order program that's now finished, but in the future, this printer will be for sale for real. The big difference between this and other 3D printers is that it has linear motors. These replace stepper motors, and that means we don't need any pulleys or belts. Another benefit of this is that it provides closed loop control, so there should be no layer skips or layer drift. The motors are also powerful, capable of running the printer at 800mm per second, with an acceleration of 22,000mm per second per second. To match the fast XY speed, the extrusion system, called Lancer, has a peak flow rate of 60mm cubed per second. And to complement that, we have a comprehensive part cooling solution, which is vital for printing PLA fast. Lancer also has a load cell for nozzle to bed auto bed leveling. Other more common features are a removable flexible build sheet and four independently controlled stepper motors for the Z axis with quad gantry leveling. What really got me excited about this is that all of the software is open source, adopting Orca Slicer as well as Clipper for the firmware. Therefore, we get things like input shaping, the web interface, and there's an inbuilt webcam for the video feed. Also part of this ecosystem is a 7 inch touchscreen running clipper screen. And for those that want to print high temp filaments, you can optionally pay to add on an enclosure. So here's how it went down. Piopoli contacted me and asked me to be part of the field testing team. I received the printer for free so I could help with that. I was given a list of things they wanted me to specifically check. And of course I was free to give feedback and advice on any other things that I noticed. Originally, there was no expectation of me making a video, so everything I filmed was just to give them feedback, but Piopoli are happy for me to show you my experience, so here we are. We start off with unboxing, and Piopoli were keen to get feedback on whether the printers were arriving in good shape. And one thing to know about this printer is that it's 30 kilograms, which makes it difficult to lift out the top. So to help with this, I ended up cutting off the sides of the box for access. My first piece of feedback is that a box like the Prusa XL would be really good here. Next up, unpacking all of the protective foam from around the machine. I understand why it's there, but hopefully this can be drastically cut down for future versions. Apparently some of the units had suffered bending of some of the metal components during shipping. The packaging is being changed to address this, but fortunately in my case, this printer was in great condition. Assembly is really easy. There's a spool holder to bolt on at the left rear, and then that 7 inch touchscreen gets bolted to the front right, where we plug in two cables. When we first turn on the machine, clipper as well as mainsail is already installed, as is clipper screen, so it's just a matter of using the clipper screen controls to get onto your Wi-Fi network, and then you can access your printer's controls through the web browser using mainsail. A smooth start in my case, so let's examine the hardware in more detail. Let's start our deep dive from the top with the Lancer Extruder. It's got a protective cover on the top, and we can remove that with only two bolts and doing so gives us a pretty good look at what's inside. This is direct drive with a lightweight stepper motor, and we also have a lever that we can pull up to completely remove the pressure from the filament for manual insertion or removal. Here it is partially disassembled. We can see inside that it's dual drive, and we can also see planetary gears to increase the torque output of that small stepper motor. We can also see that all components apart from the cover on top are machined metal. Here's that lever in action, and you should be able to see the arm on the left open up when we push it down. I've only got one complaint about this, and that's that the lever faces backwards when viewing from the front of the machine, so it will take some finding until you're familiar. 
Also, with any extruder lever like this, if you forget to close it, there won't be enough grip on the filament and you'll get erratic extrusion. On top, we have physical load and unload buttons. In Clipper, each of these is tied to their own macro that checks to see if the hot end is up to temp, and if it is, filament will be pushed in or out. Moving on to the hot end, it has a very long melt zone with what appears to be a ceramic heater. On top, the heat sink is mounted to a load cell, which comes in its own custom bracket. Nozzles are E3D V6 Volcano style, so the hot end is already compatible with a wide range of aftermarket nozzles. In the toolhead's electronic stack is an accelerometer for automatic tuning of input shaping, and all of this is run via a CAN bus system. Let's move on to the X and Y motion system, and each of these runs on beefy linear rails. Of course the main attraction is the linear motors that eliminate the need for pulleys and belts. Whereas the traditional stepper motor has two parts, a series of coils around the outside and then a series of magnets on the insides, these linear motors have magnets the whole way along the rail with the coils located in this section. If you want to learn much more about how these motors work, I've linked a short video by Lessix in the video description. These linear motors are a custom in-house design from Piopoli. They're fast, quiet, precise, closed loop, and they're normally only found on really expensive CNC machines. Therefore, they're this printer's main innovation. Moving on to the bed, we have a magnetic spring steel sheet. On one side is PEI powder coating, and on the other, we have this textured pattern. Each corner of the bed is independently controlled by its own stepper motor, and Clipper will level the four corners with its built-in quad gantry leveling. One of my favorite parts of this machine is the cable management and the electronics box. To access this, we have about a dozen M3 bolts that we remove from the top. Inside, everything is very neat and well laid out. We have a dedicated control board for the linear motors. There's disable and enable buttons that poke through the top case, as well as status LEDs for X and Y. In the other corner, we have the equivalent of stepper motor drivers, one for X and one for Y. Controlling all of the components is a Big Tree Tech Octopus Pro, and the brain of the whole thing is an Orange Pi 02 inserted into an expansion board. Interestingly, the linear motors run from this 48 volt power supply, but all of the other electronics run from a standard 24 volts. Finally, the frame, which is beautiful. It's made from powder coated aluminium extrusions and it has a really high quality feel. The reason this printer weighs 30 kilograms is because it's so solidly built. Hopefully that gives you some insight into the printer. Let's get into the juicy bit, identifying problems and working together to help solve them. One of the beauties of Clipper is the macros and Piopoli has been great at updating and refining these throughout the testing. For instance, when an update came out that required the whole SD card to be re-imaged, they added support for resizing the file system on the SD card to avoid the testers needing to do it via SSH. And originally, those physical load and unload buttons were a little bit simple, but the macros were upgraded to have conditional G-code that would check to see if the extruder was up to temp and output an error message on Clipper screen if it wasn't. There's been lots of these little touches that improve the user experience. Probably my best contribution as a tester has been helping develop ways to keep the Magneto X completely silent when it's idle. The first problem was the cooling fan for the Orange Pi, which originally was directly mounted to the metal case underneath, and on my printer at least, this was surprisingly loud as it was reverberating through the entire lower metal case. The first change I made was mounting it instead to the Pi expansion PCB with rubber washers in between. This got rid of the vast majority of the noise, but to help things even more, I wired the fan to instead plug into the Big Tree Tech mainboard, and with the help of this Reddit thread on this topic, configured Clipper to tie the fan to the internal temperature of the Pi, so that the fan only comes on when the Pi gets above a certain temperature. That was better, but there was still quite an annoying hissing sound at idle. And it turns out this was coming from the linear motors, but it could be eliminated by disabling them with this button. I told Piopoli that I was tempted to solder some wires to this board so I could ground the pins for the buttons with the Big Tree Tech Octopus. They took my complaint seriously and came back with a much better solution in creating an update for the controller board and giving instructions on how to upload this. The controller board would now be directly connected to the Pi via a USB cable. And to go with that, macros in Clipper to enable or disable the linear motors, just like the physical buttons. So now the print in macro could shut down everything and keep it quiet, and the enable command could be put in any other macros that required XY movement. And because of this, the Magneto X is now silent when sitting idle. 
without relying on the user to be there to press physical buttons. Some time ago, my patron Derek posted to our forum about Camp, Clipper Adaptive Meshing Purging. It's an add-on for Clipper that constrains the ABL probing to the area that overlaps with the print, rather than probing the entire bed, which believe me, takes some time on this printer, because there's 48 points across the whole bed. Camp will also adapt the pre-printing purge to be right next to the print area. This was an area that needed improvement, as the standard purge was very long and at times ran too deep, damaging the build surface. After following the great instructions on GitHub to get it installed, here is the new behavior. At the start of the print, Camp will calculate the bounding area and decide the size of the probing grid that best fits it. The probing will then take place, but is restricted to the immediate area around the actual print. And then, as the print's about to start, a thick purge line will be laid down next to this. This means I can probe before every print, but not have it take too long. And because this purge line is extruded so thick, it's easy to flick off. Camp did improve things greatly for me, but there was still a fundamental problem with the load cell mechanism. It tended to be inconsistent, the values frequently outside of tolerance, which caused reprobing, and the process to be even longer. As you can see from this probe accuracy test, some of the results fluctuated quite a bit, with the range of measurements here being beyond what I would consider acceptable. Fortunately, Piopoli had developed a solution for this. To combat interference, they developed a new mounting for the load cell that insulated everything, as you can see here, with the plastic shims and washers between the components. This, when combined with an updated load cell control board, gave consistency and order of magnitude better, which made any probing faster and more reliable. In case you haven't noticed, this is a behind the scenes video, not a review. So where to next? The truth is that so far I haven't done a whole lot of 3D printing here, and most of what I have done has been calibration prints, double checking things like pressure advance, flow rate, hot end temperature and retraction. This 3D Benchy was printed before any of that calibration, and I would still say it's almost blemish free. There's a tiny bit of drooping on the overhangs, and just the faintest bit of ghosting near the hole in the front. And this wavy vase looks incredible considering I forgot to lock the extruder. Besides PLA, I've had great success printing TPU with very smooth and consistent extrusion. But this is nowhere near enough for a review, so I'll be testing this machine thoroughly by following my review policy. That means testing a range of materials and all advertised features like filament runout. I'll also be testing the add-on enclosure, which I've recently been sent but have yet to install. With this large build volume and the ability to add thermistors and active chamber heating with Clipper, I'm hoping the Magneto X is a powerhouse for filaments that warp. Out of interest, I'm also planning to push things a lot harder and attempt a speed benchy. So what I need from you is to tell me in the comments what would you like to see tested that might be out of the ordinary or something explained that I haven't covered in this video. Doing so will help shape the review. Personally, I'm quite excited by this printer because of the balance I think it strikes. On one hand, we have a very polished appearance and high quality hardware just like a Bamboo Lab X1, but then it's paired with well-known electronics and open source clipper firmware for easy customization. For me, this is the bridge between newer appliance style 3D printers and a printer that can be upgraded and customized by its users in line with the RepRap movement. Plus, we have the added innovation of the linear motors. Let me know in the comments what you think so far. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.